Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today is another episode of Timber Tuesday, where all of my projects are created with wood. Enjoy! My first project today is using this Dollarama sign that I got for $3.50. I'm going to just pop off the little galvanized sign there and the little eyes. They're just tacks. I'm not going to be needing that today. It is a little wonky, so I'm going to make sure when I get my hot glue gun going that I firm it up a little bit. I'm also going to remove the bow and I'm going to give it just a couple of coats of my DIY white chalk paint focusing mostly around the edges of the rabbit. I'm using these wood garden stakes and my miter shears to make a little crate around the bottom base of the bunny. I don't want to use that green so I'm going to cover it up. I'm just going to use hot glue to apply these sticks all the way around the base making the crate. Once I have the front and the back then I'll be able to measure how long I need those little side pieces to be and then I'll do this all again for the second layer. This part's a little hard to explain, but I hope you can see and get the idea of what I'm doing. I want to have a gap in between the garden stakes, so I'm using a popsicle stick as a little support, and I'm going to cut that down so it doesn't stick out over the second stake. I'm going to glue it down onto the stake and then glue it into the first stake that's down at the bottom. I'm just gonna let this play so you can see what I'm doing. Once I had the supports built, I glued the popsicle stick on the inside of the first stake that I laid down and just made sure that it was secure before I moved on with the rest of the project. So I cut out a piece of scrapbook paper. You can see it laying there and I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply it to the rabbit. Once I have the bunny stuck down really good, I'm going to just trim any of the excess paper. And then I want to use my sanding block to sand some of this paper away to reveal the white paint underneath. And I want to do this all the way around the edges of the bunny. Using my white DIY chalk paint, I'm going to give the crate one good coat of the paint, making sure I get in all of the cracks and crevices and at the top and the bottom of each of the slats. I was lucky enough to find some of these beautiful twine carrots at the Dollar Tree. My Dollarama has some as well. They're a little bit larger and of course they've got glitter on them. So I was really excited when I found these. I started painting them because I thought I would do them either in an off-white color or my burnt orange color. But you know what? I don't like it. The burnt orange kind of makes it look like mud. So I'm just going to stick with the regular color of carrots. But I am ripping out that fake grass that they have there and I'm using these little herb sprigs that I picked up at Dollarama. I'm going to put two of them together so I'm snipping off one of the little holes that attaches to the stem and I'm pushing the other one inside of it. Then I'm going to use a good amount of hot glue and push this into the top of the carrot. To distress the crate, I'm using a little chippy brush and some burnt umber acrylic paint and I'm going to dry brush it around the edges, on the cracks, on the top and the bottom, in between the slats like you see me doing here. I just want to dirty it up a little bit so it blends in better with the color and texture of the scrapbook paper. I used my Cricut Joy to cut out fresh pick daily in carrots five cents each and I just use the Dollar Tree contact paper. I love it 
for a transfer tape, it works really well. And that whole roll is only a buck 25, saves me so much money when I'm using my Cricut. If you saw me working with the transfer tape with my thumbs and fingers, what I like to do is just put a little bit of schmutz on it so it's not quite as sticky. And that really helps to not pull off the paint from my project when I'm peeling back the transfer tape. I'm going to use five of these carrots. Three are gonna go on the left-hand side and two are gonna go on the right-hand side. And I am going to be just putting them in standing straight up and down, just like they would be if they were growing out of the ground. I'm gonna use a little bit more hot glue just to make sure that they don't tip over. So a little bit on the crate or on the bunny will work just fine. Then I'm going to add some boxwood and again, have that standing straight up so it just looks sort of like some grass or blossoms in between the growing carrots. I added one solo wood flower and a beautiful lace ribbon around the rabbit's neck and I think this project turned out super cute. I'd like to take a quick second and give a shout out to all of my current subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you for your continued support. If you are new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed and you like what you see, I would love it if you could hit that red button too. This project evolved a few times before I finally got it right. I'm taking this antique sky paint, which is sort of a minty bluey green, and it's a Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint. And I'm just gonna give all the sides of this birdhouse one good coat. My first thought was to put a matching or coordinating scrapbook paper on the front of the birdhouse to match up with the green, but that green is just really hard to match. Anyway, I decided to take some of this really rustic wood chippy look scrapbook paper and I'm going to cover all four sides of the birdhouse with this just using a glue stick. Once the paper was dry, I just used my craft knife and just kind of cut away any of the excess paper on the corners. Then I grabbed my sandpaper, which is I believe a 60 or an 80 grit sandpaper. And what I wanna do is just make some of that green peek through. So I'll be sanding down the edges, pulling some of the paint up, sorry, pulling some of the paper up to reveal some of that green underneath. Using some needle nose pliers, I'm just going to twist it until I get that little piece of dowel out. I cut down a piece of artificial stem and I'm going to hot glue that into the hole so that becomes the perch for the birds. So you may have noticed that the top and bottom of the birdhouse were kind of cut down and kind of shabby looking. The reason I did that is because I wanted to have a sturdier base and a thicker top for the birdhouse. So I'm gluing them onto these little artist panels that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I believe these are the four by four sizes. So I put one at the bottom and now I'm going to glue the other one on top upside down so the flat part is facing the top. Now I started to paint the top of this ivory and when I got after just a few brush strokes I thought you didn't need to do this because all I wanted to do was keep sort of that natural wood color and distress it. But now that I had started painting it, I ended up having to paint the whole thing anyway because I wanted it to look cohesive. I didn't want something to be painted and something else not to be painted. So if I was to do this project over again, I would just leave these top and bottom pieces, their natural wood color, and just use the burnt umber to distress them rather than painting it. I've got some of the Dollar Tree Spanish moss that I'm going to hot glue all the way around the bottom portion of the birdhouse as you can see me doing here. Make sure when you're doing this that you use something on your fingers so you don't burn yourself like I did. It wasn't bad burns by any means, but I just thought I would be able to get away with not using a finger protector. Boy, was I wrong. 
I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but I had totally forgotten to cut out the hole for the little birdies. So I'm doing that now with my craft knife. I found this tiny little nest with three tiny little eggs at a dollar store local to my area. So I'm going to take some of the antique sky paint and paint them just with one coat. And you can see some of the dark speckles coming through. So they look really natural. I'm going to embellish the birdhouse with some of these natural skinned solo wood flowers. And when I say skinned, that just means that they have some brown to them, which is a little bit of the bark. And I'm going to glue a couple of those. I'm going to use some small little pinkish ivory colored flowers that came in the stash of things that my friend Kimberly sent to me. And now I'm going to also add some of these little lamb's ear sprig stems that are from some lavender. And I'm just going to keep on working with this until I like it. For the final touch of this birdhouse, I'm adding some Spanish moss to the top corner. I'm going to hot glue the little nest back into it, add a few little greenery sprigs and some of those little pink flowers, and then put the eggs back in. So I really love how the birdhouse turned out, but I felt it needed something a little bit extra. So I tried a couple of pots, I tried some bowls, I tried a few different things, and I just came back to the spindle candlestick. I just think that is the best way to display a sweet little birdhouse like the one I just made. So I had this from a previous project I took it apart and I'm painting the bottom portion of it with that ivory color and then I'll distress it with the burnt umber but I'm going to leave the spindle the same color it's a beautiful deep mahogany brown and I think it just accents the birdhouse really beautifully This year for Valentine's, our Dollar Tree had these beautiful little barns. I just think they're absolutely beautiful. Of course, I am not into the pink and they have the paper on top, but it seems to be peeling off fairly easily for me today. I'm also going to pop off the little wood frame at the top because I want to just set that aside and I'll work on that later. I'm going to apply a couple of coats of this dark gray DIY chalk paint. This is just black and white latex paint that I mixed together in a big jug and then I added my talc to give it that opaque look so it would cover really well. I want to cover up all of the pink. So there's pink on the sides, there's pink on the top, there's pink everywhere. So I'm just going to give this a couple of good coats to make sure I can camouflage all of that pink. This is an image of wood that I got from Pixabay. I printed it off on some gray cardstock and now I'm going to trace out the barn shape. I cut the paper out so there would be a little bit of that dark gray peeking through on the edges and I just rounded out the corners a little bit too because that's what the shape of the barn is. I'm just using a glue stick on the back of the paper to apply it down and I'm going to smooth it out making sure I get all of the edges really well. I also created a little label that I printed out on white cardstock and I'm using a distressing technique using my scissors and just running it around the edge of the cardstock just to rough it up a little bit. I learned this trick from Linda over at Faith Chick 777's DIY by Design and I'll have her channel linked down in my description box so you can go take a look. Using the same brush that I painted the gray, it's still got a little bit of the paint on it. I'm just going to go around and distress the label a little bit, focusing mostly on the edges to give them more of a distinct look. 
I used a glue stick again to put it onto the barn. And just in case you're wondering, yes, this will be available as a free printable on my website. That link is also down in my description box. I painted the little wood roof piece white and now I'm just going to hot glue it down into its place. I love adding little crates or boxes to the back of these wooden signs. This will make a really pretty planter or you could put soap in it or dish soap or have it in the bathroom or in the kitchen just for some storage and it just makes it look so pretty. I really hope you enjoyed these farmhouse spring DIYs and got some inspiration to create your own home decor. If you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and it helps my channel grow. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.